being young means no fear, no boundaries, no worries, and the mentality is anything can be accomplished. Two kids around 12 and 13 years old at the time were making an unmeasurable impact on hip hop. No matter young or old, everyone knew illegal and everyone had to respect the talent. This is the story of little Malik and Jamal. This is a story of illegal. Being young and being in hip hop has always been the case since the 80s. If you look at MCs like Roxanne Shantae, LL Cool J, MC Light, and Special Ed, the one common thing they have all in common is they all were teenagers when they got signed. The youth movement would continue from the 80s to the early 90s. The biggest difference was the MCs were getting younger and younger, but the talent was still there. You had groups like Criss Cross who would go multi-platinum, and it was perfect because the demographic for Criss Cross and these young groups were to all the 80s babies and these brand new consumers that were starting to come up, and hip-hop would be their number one go-to music at the time. And this is also around the time Mob Deep dropped their debut album, Juvenile Hell. And if you remember, Mob Deep was still in their late teens when they recorded this album. This album was a lot different from the younger talent because this would be a more direct, hardcore approach. The story of Illegal actually starts at a Naughty by Nature concert. Mr. Malik, who was 12 years old at the time, went to the concert. He managed to get backstage and he ran into KG's cousin. He ran for KG's cousin, and then KG's cousin took him backstage to actually rap for the group. Naughty by Nature were very impressed, and they ended up flying out Malik to Jersey the very next week. Mr. Malik would run into Jamal at a stretch from Naughty by Nature recording session. The two decided that it's best to not become solo artists, but to team up and be a group. That way they can rival the hottest group at the time, which was Crisscross. Cross. But they wanted to make a group that would be totally different from that. Everything would line up super quick for Illegal, literally within weeks. So within weeks of them meeting each other, Illegal was introduced to legendary producer Dallas Austin, who was starting his own record label at the time called Rowdy Records. Left Eye would introduce illegal to Dallas Austin and everything would grow from there. Everybody dude. When I first so, so left her she she brought me these kids one day to the studio and she was getting ready to go on the road. She so I got this group. You gotta sign in a rowdy. They're dope. They're like a little red man, little trash. <laughs> I'm sorry, that and description so, is funny. When they came to the studio they were finishing each other's sentences. They were like, them dudes was like dope. They was like, yo, no, no, they, they, they throwing dice with each other. I'm like, these little dudes is bad as shit. She's like, well, keep them with you. I got to go on tour. I play dice. They stay in the studio with me at dark. We have we have rooms in there, right? So the kids, are, everybody's loving these kids. Like Eric Sermon, Busta Rhymes, everybody that's in my studio work, Diamond D. Everybody's working with me already. So the kids come in and they out rapping everybody. They are rapping mm. and cussing and rapping and cussing and, you know, hit a gut, what you want it? Hit a gut, good. pop, yeah. pop. So, and I, nobody's ever seen. Little Malik and Jamal needed a group name. Who else to give you a good group name than Busta Rhymes? Busta Rhymes used to be around the kids, and they would just smoke, drink, cuss, wow out. And Busta Rhymes was like, "Damn, this is a this has got to be illegal. This has to be illegal." So from there, Dallas Austin was like, "That's the perfect name. We're gonna call them illegal." We had to raise ourselves at a certain point. Um, the kids, man. Kids these days, you know what I'm saying, going up fast because of the environment that, that we're around all the time and things that we are exposed to, you know, like drugs and guns. We had to raise ourselves at a certain point. After the group signed with Dallas Austin's label, they got to recording right away and they ended up dropping their debut album, The Untold Truth, in 1993. The lead single, Head or Gut, was crazy because there was nothing that's ever been seen like this in hip-hop. The raw rhymes, the grittiness, 
But the biggest thing was these were kids, 12 and 13 years old. And it wasn't necessarily a shock thing or something to shake up the industry. It was just more of these kids were really the product of their environment. And they really wanted to showcase their talent, but also show that they can stand up and rhyme with just about any age group because they sounded years and years ahead of their time. One of the focuses on the album was they really wanted to go at all the kids that were in their age range and their age group. And this wasn't necessarily to start beef or drama. They just wanted to let them know that they felt that they were not only better than them, but they deserved just as much praise as all the young groups that were out at the same time. The lead single, Head or Gut, was dope. But what single that really took them over the top and what really would push them through was the second single, We Gets Busy. Not only was this song even doper, it featured legendary producer, legendary MC of EPMD, Eric Sermon. And at this time, Eric Sermon co-sign was one of the best co-signs you can get in hip hop. Because if you remember... He co-signed K-Solo, Redman, Das FX. These are artists that are going gold and platinum. So the Eric Sermon touch was perfect because this really would show that these kids really meant something to hip hop if Eric Sermon is putting his name behind them and also featuring on their album. Craziest thing about Illegal is they literally got a record deal within a month. But they also broke up as soon as the first album dropped. And it wasn't necessarily any internal beef for issues with the two. It's just that Mr. Malik always wanted to be a solo artist just like Jamal. And Mr. Malik really wanted to test out the grounds of being a solo artist. So the group would split up after just one album. The one thing about Little Malik is he always knew he had talent and he always believed in himself. So that's why he felt like he can be a solo artist just because if you listen to him rhyme, he was years ahead of himself and he was better than a lot of rappers at that time. He would go over to the West Coast and rebrand his name from Little Malik to Mr. Malik and also go by the name of Hershey Loke. He would also go on one of the illest feature runs in hip-hop history. He would be on three of the most important albums in hip-hop history. Three classic albums. Mr. Malik would end up on one of the biggest hip-hop albums of all time. Snoop Dogg's debut album, Doggy Style. This album nearly sold a million records the first week. Everybody had the Doggy Style album. He would feature on the song Pump Pump and he would blow the verse out the water. This would be a major step in the right direction for Mr. Malik. Malik would strike gold back to back. He would end up on the album that literally saved Def Jam, which is Warren G's debut album, Regulate. Now, the key thing with being on this album is since Warren G didn't sign a Death Row, he signed to Def Jam. A lot of the Death Row artists were not allowed to work on this project, but Mr. Malik wasn't signed to Death Row or anyone at that time as a solo artist. So he was able to flourish and be on just about any project he wanted at the time. He would end up on a song called what, What's Next, drop in another dope ill verse and just added on to his legacy as a dope solo artist back to back to back classic features back to back to back classic albums mr malik would end up on one of the best albums in 1995 the classic album dog food by the dog pound just rolling with snoop dogg and death row he was in the position to make it on any album around that time because he had the voice, he had the talent, and he had the skill set. Also around that time, he would end up on a song with Too Short and even got a chance to record a song with Tupac while Tupac was on Death Row. 
Mr. Malik was on fire during this time era. Even though Mr. Malik was a solo artist, he was still signed to Rowdy Records. And for some reason, Rowdy Records did not take advantage of all the momentum Mr. Malik had in dropping a solo album. So he did end up dropping a single, but the album was ultimately shelved. On the flip side, Jamal was able to release a solo album in 1995 called Last Chance No Breaks. Jamal had a lot of momentum at this time. He even got a legendary Pete Rock remix on his song called Fade Jamal. Jamal was starting to build up a buzz, and he was continuing to work with Eric Sermon around the same time. During that time, Jamal would almost be like an unofficial member of the hit squad. He was still working with Eric Sermon, and he would end up on the Def Squad album that featured Redman, Eric Sermon, and Keith Murray as a group on the album called El Nino. In hindsight, Illegal definitely broke up way, way, way too soon. It would have been great to see the group continue to cultivate themselves, grow as artists, as a group, but then do solo work as well because Mr. Malik definitely had a way to tap into the West Coast sound and drop as a solo artist in that vein. And just the same with... Jamal just having that East Coast sound and then them two coming back together and then dropping album after album. But either way, this group really paved the way for a lot of groups and solo MCs because seeing them do it at such a young age, at such a high level and a high uh, at such a high quality, they definitely inspired so many MCs that came up after them that they don't necessarily get credit for. But they did make their mark on hip hop as one of the best groups that would come out during this era. And we here, we opening the doors for everybody. You know what I'm saying? For all my people around my way, that's doing what they want to do, is, is rapping and all that. You know what I'm saying? Just look out, there's some more best that's coming from me later. Yeah, word.